grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus. Amen. The text is from the Gospel lesson in Mark, the eighth chapter. And Jesus went on with his disciples to the village of Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? The text. Last Wednesday at 4 o'clock, the time for confirmation class, it was 65 degrees outside, and the kids asked if they could have the class outside, because when the weather begins to warm up, the kids love to frolic. Winter, they get a little slower. Sometimes they go like this. Sometimes they go like this. And then I say, all right, take a break once around the church. Or go get a drink of water. Wake up. And they do. But now they are getting to the point, we only got three more Wednesdays. We only have 36 in all. Jesus was with his disciples for 26,280 hours. I think we're getting cheated. If you go to Sunday school every week, you get about 624 hours. We get 36 hours with the kids. You know who gets the rest? Moms and dads. That's where the responsibility really rests. Because first they've got to get the information, and they've got to know what to do with it. Two parts to learning. We find Jesus again on the same place where he was two weeks ago. It's the Mount of Transfiguration, up by Caesarea Philippi, named after Caesar, Augustus, and Philip, was the son of the Herod not so great, the gentler son whose brother stole his wife, Herod Agrippa, the reason that John the Baptist got his head cut off because he was a critic of Agrippa having stolen Philip's wife. So in Philip's territory, he thought, oh, I'll patronize the emperor, I'll call it Caesar. Philip, Caesarea, Philippi, and that's where Mount Hermon was. Jesus went up to a high mountain. I personally think it was Mount Hermon. Others think differently. Snow-capped, high, 9,000 feet. They're up there, apart. Peter, James, and John, Moses and Elijah appear. It's pretty bright because Christ's glory is being revealed. It's pretty bright. And then Jesus says, you've been with me now all this long time. Who do people say that I am? They said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, others say one of the prophets. And of course, there's a lot to choose from. There were 88 prophets during this time. There were 15 judges during this time. There were 42 kings during this time. Two are reported to having been inclined toward the Lord. 40 of the kings from the north and the south are reported to have been not inclined toward the Lord. So it's the Lord's intention to make his disciples smarter than these judges or as smart as the prophets, that they learn the material, they learn what to do with it. Who do people say that I am? Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some say one of the prophets. Christ said, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. 
And he's trying to make this impression upon them that they know the material. Spring comes, children get more ambitious to be somewhere other than class. There was a first grade teacher who had a class with spring approaching. They were getting a little goof offish. Is that a word? Goof offish? Like wanting to do their own thing? And so he decided to give a test over some old proverbs. See how you do on this. You can't teach an old dog new math. You can't teach an old dog. <laughs> Is that the best you got? New tricks, of course. An idle mind is the best way to relax. An idle mind is, yeah, that's only, I'm always amazed there's so few that are willing to respond. <laughs> You're so Lutheran. Laugh and the whole world laughs with you. Cry and you cry. Ah, not what the child said. Cry and you have to blow your nose. If at first you don't succeed, get new batteries. When the blind lead the blind, ah, stump you. When the blind lead the blind, get out of the way. No, when the blind lead the blind, they both fall in the ditch. There's no fool like, no, there's no fool like Aunt Edie. You see, they weren't ready. They weren't ready, and neither were the disciples. I'm always amazed at the disciples, how long it took them to get ready. They were with Jesus, lo, these 26,000 hours. And when they're walking from Jericho up to Jerusalem, they still weren't ready. They thought Jesus was going to unfold an earthly kingdom. That's what they wanted. They wanted to be president and secretary of state. Even James and John's mother wanted that for them. I mean, after all these hours, living, sleeping, eating, walking, talking, impressed upon Transfiguration Mountain, they still don't get it. Jesus now turns his face like flint toward Jerusalem. That's such a precise statement. That's such a determination. Flint. You start a fire with flint. Turns his face like flint. To Jerusalem would not be deterred. And Peter said, Who do people say that I am? You're the Christ. Son of the living God. He said, men didn't reveal that to you, Peter. That confession comes from the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus began to explain, now I must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things. This morning, confirmation class, we talked about flogging and what they used, cat and nine tails with bones ripping the flesh down to the ribs, but only do 39 because they killed too many people with 40. That's where he's headed. Headed Jerusalem for butcher shop time. Crown of thorns time. Agonizing time, dying time, dehydrating time. Cross time. And Peter says no. Peter says no. No. Won't be. Won't be. And Jesus says, get behind me, Peter. But he doesn't say Peter. He says, get behind me, Satan. For you're not thinking of the things of the Lord. You're thinking of things of the earth. All authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. And of course, in that directive, Jesus is announcing that he owns the whole thing. Remember when the devil took Jesus to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the earth. Well, they're up there. 
You're up there on the mountain. He says, bow down and worship me, and I'll give this to you. What a diploid. Satan is talking through his ear. Bow down and worship me, I'll give this to you. He's talking to the guy who built it and who owns it. Impossible. All authority is given to me in heaven and in earth. And now he has bestowed this authority upon me and upon you. On Pastor Asbury, Pastor Bucklew, Pastor Wilkie, we're speaking it to the crowds and to you. We're speaking it to your friends, to your neighbors, to your cronies, to your children, to your children. It was called the Shekeim. Because when a priest or a man of God would take his position. We have these stoles to prove that we are ordained, called pastors. When a person achieved a status of a teacher, he could delegate another teacher to go out in his name. And the delegate showing up was the same authority as the man showing up. He was the Shekeim. And Jesus is saying, I commission you as Shekeim. Go make disciples. Baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go do this. Teach the intellectual stuff and teach the meaning of what it means. I doubt if we'll have enough time in confirmation to tell the whole story. But you parents have enough time around the table at bedtime, walking down the road, fishing, to tell the whole story. That's the intellectual part. Now comes the living part. That is, what does this mean? How am I to live? How am I to act? It's not, if the blind leave the blind, both fall into the ditch. No, it's the blind leave the blind, get out of the way. No, it's about us, pastors, teachers, most of all parents, raising up the children according to their unique personality, that when they are old, they do not depart from it. Greater challenge nowadays, I admit it, a lot more distractions, a lot more neon lights, a lot more spangles, a lot more AI. But the commission is still the same. We are the Shekeim. We speak in the name of the Lord with authority, with love, with knowledge of the meaning and knowledge of knowing how to live as he lived. Amen. Peace of God that passes our understanding. Keep us bound in Christ. Amen.